evening, good evening, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, here we are once again, uh, another Tuesday night. The Lord has blessed us. The Lord has kept us and has granted us this, another unmerited opportunity uh, to gather together and to study his word. Uh, we're grateful to the Lord for all that he has done for each and every one uh, who is uh, gathering in to uh, study the word of God tonight. Uh, even in the midst, as we have uh, been saying and uh, reiterating now, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of this time of uh, turmoil and uncertainty, uh, the word of God standeth sure, uh, and we can always depend on the word of God uh, being the truth uh, that we need to make it in times like these. Amen. So tonight, our lesson, we are continuing uh, right where we left off last week uh, in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, verses 28 through 33. And our topic is the mystery of marriage, part two. We are uh, continuing in our consideration of marriage as it has been revealed as in this particular epistle. As we've stated, the Apostle Paul is in the midst of showing us uh, how uh, the reality of who we are in Christ, the new humanity that has been created uh, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, how that uh, changes how we live, how we are called to uh, behave ourselves and deal with one another uh, in light of this glorious new reality. Uh, and he is uh, continuing in dealing uh, with marriage, which again reminds us uh, that the new birth uh, is not just a spiritual reality, uh, but it translates into a physical reality. It translates into a relational reality. It translates into a familial reality, as we're going to see next week, uh, but it translates into a, a marital reality, the way that we deal with each other as husbands and wives. That is, has uh, uh, ramifications from the, the reality of Christian uh, uh, truth. Uh, affects how we deal with one another in marriage. Uh, and again, as we uh, stated last week, um, the, the, uh, this, this particular passage, uh, there are three verses uh, in which the apostle deals with how wives are to relate to their husbands. And then there are eight verses dealing with how husbands are to deal with their wives. So we're in the middle of the husband portion. Uh, so again, brothers, we are uh, we are under the uh, spotlight tonight, uh, but we're going to be all right. Uh, so as we did uh, last week, uh, I'm going to have uh, Sister Porter. She is uh, uh, online. She's uh, uh, taking heed of the questions. Uh, so as the questions come in, uh, she'll be uh, watching and she'll be uh, taking them down. Uh, so if we don't cover it in the lesson, we'll try to answer those questions at the end. Uh, so again, we are dealing with marriage in Ephesians 5, verses 28 through 33. Uh, so let's read it. I'll read that for us at this time. And it says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is the word of God. Uh, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Father, how we thank you uh, once again for granting us this precious privilege of being able to gather together to study your word. We ask now, Lord, that as we open your word, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we would behold the truth of your word, that we would be impacted by the truth of your word, and that, that we would then apply that truth to our daily living. I pray for husbands and wives everywhere, especially those of us within the household of faith, 
uh, that we might take heed uh, and uh, be encouraged and strengthened and corrected uh, by these words of you uh, that you have shared with us as your people. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, so again, we're in the midst of uh, Paul's discourse, and he is in the middle of dealing with the husband's portion uh, of this equation. Uh, so just to kind of give us the context, I'm going to go back and read just the first few verses of this section, uh, beginning back at verse 25. And it reads, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And we said last week that uh, as, while the wives are, are charged to submit to their husbands, uh, the husband is charged uh, to give his life for his wife. Uh, this is a, a, a higher standard uh, that the husband has to live up to uh, within the marital uh, uh, contract, if you will, within the covenant of marriage. The, the husband is the one with the, the higher level of uh, responsibility uh, in, the, in the relationship of that uh, marriage. Uh, so he used to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. This is every uh, Christian husband's desire, that just as Christ uh, purifies his church, uh, the husband seeks to, to, to honor and, and promote purity uh, in the heart and in the life of his wife. He seeks to model that for his wife. He seeks to, to bring her into that by his uh, influence as her husband, as a, as a, as a, as a man of God. The, the, the Christian man ought to have a desire uh, for purity in the woman that he loves. Uh, that's what we see Christ is working in his church, uh, which I mean, while, while we're here, it ought to uh, quicken us as, as Christian men, especially. Uh, uh, if I uh, love this woman, uh, especially for those who are uh, considering marriage or anticipating marriage, uh, if, I, if I love this woman, then I'm going to want her holiness. I'm going to seek her holiness. I'm going to desire uh, her uh, purity uh, in our relationship. Uh, so that kind of uh, rules out uh, a lot of what goes on. And we've talked about this before, that there are some things that have become so routine and so um, expected and accepted in relationships today uh, that when we uh, stand on what the word teaches, we're looked at as anachronisms and as uh, backwards and as whatever other names uh, folks might want to call us, uh, but but this this passage helps us to see that uh, cohabitation uh, and the Christian don't go together. Yeah, cohabitation and the Christian don't go together. Uh, to all of my brethren, especially uh, Christians, don't move in. Uh, we marry. A -a Amen. I'm gonna say that again for anybody that missed it. Christians, uh, Christian men, especially. Uh, I'm talking to the men especially, but it, it applies to all of us. Christian men, we don't move in, we marry. Uh, that, 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 that's how we get down a, a, as Christians. Uh, I, I see we got a question already, amen. Uh, but but, but that, 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 the, the desire for holiness uh, that, a, that a man should have for the woman that he intends uh, to marry, uh, tr uh, it translates into what kind of uh, 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 living arrangements are kind of uh, considered. Uh, so what, what's our what's our question, Sister Porter? Last week you said the wife gets love and the husband gets respect. I'm wondering, does the husband get love? Oh, absolutely. The question was, uh, the the uh, what we said last uh, week was that the the wife uh, gets love and the husband gets respect. Does the husband get love? Absolutely. Uh, we we are we are called to love one another. Uh, within the body of Christ, uh, as uh, uh, loving our neighbor as ourselves, we're called to love uh, everybody, uh, uh, just as we're all called to submit to one another. Uh, but as the 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 the, the husband is specially charged uh, to love his wife, uh, as Christ loved the church, 
but the church, just as the church submits to the Lordship of Christ, uh, the church submits to the Lordship of Christ out of love for Christ. Uh, so yes, the, the husband receives love from the wife, just like Christ receives love from the church. Uh, it's just that the, 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 the dynamic of the, the, the nature of that relationship is, is, is more, and, and we'll get into that as we get to the end of the lesson, that the, 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 the wife is more receptive uh, to love in the sense of uh, 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 comfort in terms of affection. The wife is, in more, is more in need of that than the husband is. And by the same token, the husband is more in need of respect. Now, now the wife gets respect from the husband as well, but the husband is more in need of respect uh, than the wife is. Uh, and we're going to see that uh, as the lesson goes, goes on. But yes, the, the husband should, uh, the husband wants to be loved. Uh, so the husband receives love from the wife and gives love to the wife. The husband receives respect from the wife and gives respect to the wife. Uh, so it's not either or, it's both and. Uh, but, but, but as we get into the lesson, uh, 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 Paul says, uh, in light of this reality that, that, that men, uh, that the husband seeks uh, the purity and the holiness of his bride, he says in verse 38, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He says, just as you take care of your own body, that's how you ought to love your wife. Uh, husbands. You ought to love your wives as you love your own body. He says, uh, you take care, you, you know that you take care of your own body. Uh, you make sure that you're taken care of. You make sure that that you are, are, are clean when it's time to, to, to wash yourself, when it's time to dress yourself. All of those things, you do that for yourself. You make sure that that's taken care of. It says that you ought to love your wives with that same kind of care, with that same kind of concern, with that same kind of commitment that you have in loving and keeping your own body uh, together. And it says, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. See, the, the, the man who is unloving to his wife is not doing himself uh, any favors. He's doing himself a disservice is what Paul is getting at. If, if, if The man that loves his wife loves himself. And we're going to see, get into that in a few verses, the fact that, that you and your wife, Christian husband, are one flesh. You are, you are one unit. You are one together. Uh, so, so if you uh, love your wife, it, it, it's part of you loving yourself. And you do love yourself. And we're going to see that just a few uh, verses also. Uh, but just a few uh, 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 cross references that we can consider uh, in this idea of, of a man, a husband loving his wife and loving himself. In 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 3, verse 7, it says, Husbands. Likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Uh, so, so husbands, uh, the way that you treat your wife, the way that we treat our wives has an impact on our prayer lives. Uh, it says that, that, that you want to dwell with them with understanding. Uh, we're going to see that again, just a, 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 a verse or two, to be understanding with your wife, uh, to, to, to dwell with them uh, with, 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 a, with a sense of care and of gentleness, it says giving honor to the wife. So again, there's that, that respect piece again. I'm giving honor to my wife uh, as to the weaker vessel. Now, that's not to say that, 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 that women are, are, are mentally weaker than men or spiritually weaker than men. But generally, uh, generally speaking, the average man is physically stronger than the average woman. So that's, that's one piece of it, uh, that, that as, as my wife's husband, she ought to, to expect uh, that if something jumps off, amen, uh, that, that, that her husband is going to jump in, that if, that if something, comes, if something goes down, uh, that, that the husband is going to be the one uh, to step in and be the protector. My, my wife knows that uh, if, if push comes to shove, uh, her husband will take a bullet for her. Uh, that, that's, that's just part of the understanding of, of husbands and wife. I'm looking over at my wife and she's, a, amen, okay. I, I wasn't getting any response <laughs> from over there. I wasn't sure if she was uh, amen or if she was calling amen. those things into question. Amen. Uh, but yes, that's, that, that, that's part of, of the whole idea of her being the, the, the weaker vessel, but also has to do with her being the more precious vessel. 
Weaker in the sense of, of, of more fragile. Weaker in the sense of, of like of, 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 of fine china uh, versus uh, uh, stainless steel. Uh, uh, the, the, the China is, is it's more easily uh, to be broken. Therefore, you take better care of it. Therefore, you, you, you want to make sure that it's taken care of. Uh, that, that's the same idea that we see here with a husband uh, loving his wife as he loves himself. Uh, then we also see this, this whole idea again in, in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 7 and 3 it says this, let the husband render to his wife the affection due her and likewise also the wife to her husband. Uh, so so the, 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 the husband, uh, uh, it, essentially Paul is saying in, in this passage, he's talking about uh, intimacy within the marriage, but it, but it goes broader than that also in the fact that the, the wife is due affection from her husband uh, and, and vice versa. The husband is due affection from the wife. Uh, so, so, so in loving his wife as he loves himself, he is rendering due affection. Uh, he is giving her uh, uh, the, the, the comfort that she needs. He's giving her uh, the, 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 the feeling of, of being uh, uh, kept and being safe. He, he grants that to his wife as he loves her. He loves her as he loves himself. Uh, and so, so, so sometimes when we get to a passage like this, uh, uh, people bring up the, the whole idea of, of whether or not uh, we... Uh, love ourselves. Uh, and people have, I've heard it said uh, in various settings uh, that, you know, in order for you to love uh, uh, your wife, in order for you to love your husband, in order for you to love anybody, you first need to learn how to love yourself. Uh, and I've heard people say, you know, well, you love your neighbor as you love yourself, but you first got to learn how to love yourself. Uh, and uh, I imagine that, that some, even as I'm saying that, are, are, are typing amen. Well, well slow your typing. Uh, because I, 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 I personally, uh, and I believe I'm on biblical ground when I say this, I'm not in, in agreement with that. I don't believe we need to learn how to love ourselves. You, we love ourselves. We already love ourselves. We come here loving ourselves. And when I've said this in other uh, settings, I've gotten some, some pushback, but I'm, I'm standing firm on this. Uh, we don't need to teach ourselves how to love ourselves. We already know. Uh, uh, contrary uh, to the report of Whitney Houston and George Benson, uh, learning to love yourself is not the greatest love of all. Uh, but the word of God says, learning to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the greatest love of all. We already love ourselves. Now, we might not love ourselves well. We might not love ourselves uh, in ways that are helpful to ourselves. Uh, we might engage in, 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 in self-defeating uh, activities. We, we might in, in, indulge in, in self-destructive behavior, but even in those areas, we're doing something because we, it's giving us pleasure for, for the moment, some form of pleasure uh, that, that we are, are deeming uh, enjoyable, even if it's killing us, even if it's ultimately destroying us. And the reason why we do that is because we love ourselves. We want to feel good. Uh, we, want, we, we want to take the pain away. We want to take our mind off of our troubles. Uh, anybody who, 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 who thinks that they hate themselves, uh, 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 you can't convince me that you hate yourself while you're feeding yourself every day. Uh, if you hate somebody, you're not going to make sure that they eat every day. You're not going to make sure they eat multiple times a day. You're not going to make sure that they got some clothes to wear and got a house to live in. If you have all of those things and you make sure you have all those things, that's evidence that you don't really hate yourself. You do love yourself. Uh, uh, and again, we might love ourselves in, in, in we might not like our, might not like ourselves. We might not like certain things about ourselves, but we come here loving ourselves. So, so when it says that a husband has to love his wife as he loves himself, he doesn't need to figure that out. You already love yourself, husband. Now, can, now, now, now transfer and translate that love to your wife. And then, and, and then Paul backs it up in verse 29. He says, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord of the church. He says, no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Nobody who's in their right mind has ever hated their own flesh. You, Like we just said, you take care of your flesh. You make sure your flesh is fed when it's hungry. You make sure your flesh is covered when it's cold. You make sure your flesh is under a fan when it's hot. You take care of your flesh. By the same token, husbands ought to have that same kind of awareness, that same kind of concern, and that same kind of commitment 
for the care of their wives. It says, no man has yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. That's the way uh, any uh, right-minded individual feels about their own flesh. We nourish it and we cherish it. Nourish, the, the Greek word there is ektrepho, and that means to, to bring up. It means to, to, to nurture. It means, again, to feed. The same idea that, that we just had, that, that you're taking care of yourself. You're nourishing yourself. You said you should have that same uh, idea towards your wife. The same way, and he's, he's going to bring Christ and the church into it, but what he's saying is that the same way that you take care of yourself, you nourish yourself, you're called upon uh, in, in this Christian uh, uh, landscape, in the Christian marriage a forum to have that same kind of nourishing care and concern for your wife. You nourish it, you nourish it, and you cherish it. The, the word cherish is thalpo, and that means uh, to comfort. It means to keep warm. Uh, so so, so it, 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 it has, it's the same word uh, that's actually used uh, in 1 Thessalonians uh, 2 and 7 that deals with uh, 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 the Apostle Paul and his relationship to the church. It says, but we were gentle among you just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. It says Paul saying that we, uh, the apostle, he says, I was gentle among you just like a mother cherishes her children, takes care of her children, warms her children. He says that's the same way that the husband, first of all, that, that, that anybody keeps himself warm nourishes and cherishes himself, that's the same way that the husband has to cherish his wife. I, I should, my, my wife should feel nurtured and kept warm by me as her husband. This is part of my responsibility. Now, now, now we have to understand how countercultural this was when Paul was first uh, giving this. What we have to understand is that uh, just the fact that he has so much to say to the husbands was uh, uh, revolutionary because in Greco-Roman culture at this time, husbands didn't owe their wives anything. The, a, a husband was, was essentially uh, in the old stereotypical uh, idea of the king of the castle and what I say goes and you're just here. Uh, to do what I do, what I say, and and, and do as I, uh, as I as I command, and make me happy. That's what the wife was for. Wife didn't have any expectations of the husband to be treated any particular any particular way by the husband. A matter of fact, really, in that time, the the the, the wife was someone who was there uh, to make babies. Uh, the 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 concubines were there uh, for the pleasure of the husband. Uh, so, so Paul is saying uh, uh, that's not the way it's going to go in the church of Jesus Christ. Husbands, you've got responsibilities, not only uh, to take to, to be to take care of your wives' uh, needs, but to love your wives, to nourish your wives, to cherish your wives. That's part of of your responsibility, husband, to your wife. That's part of my responsibility to my wife. Um, my, my wife, uh, she should she shouldn't need to get this elsewhere. I know uh, um, a lot of the, the, the sisters uh, uh, have a lot of good, good friends. Uh, uh, women have a generally uh, a, a greater need, a deeper level of friendship uh, among other women uh, than maybe men do. Uh, but, but even in those deep friendships, and, and my, 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 my lovely wife has, has a bunch of really good friends, uh, and they laugh and they talk and they share in ways uh, that, that she might not uh, desire to share with me. But when it comes to the nourishing, when it comes to the cherishing, she shouldn't need to get that elsewhere. She shouldn't need to go to any of her good girlfriends uh, to, kept, to be kept warm. She should need to go elsewhere to get uh, affirmation and nourishment and nurture and feeding. She should be getting that from me. Anything that she gets outside of our relationship ought to be uh, gravy. It ought to be extra. It ought to just be flowing over the side over what she's getting at home. She shouldn't, no wife should need uh, somebody else uh, to nurture them and to feed them. And, and to affirm them and to keep them cherished, especially uh, anybody of the opposite sex. Uh, let me just share this as, as a warning mm -hmm. uh, to all, and this is to the husbands and the wives. Uh, <laughs> uh, be careful 
about how you engage with some of these uh, uh, Facebook friends, some of these social media acquaintances, uh, that maybe some some somebody that you uh, have have run back into, uh, that you knew back in college, that you knew back in high school, uh, and now you are sharing stuff on Facebook. You're sharing stuff on on Instagram or wherever you share, uh, and now you find yourself sharing stuff with this person that you're not sharing with your spouse. That ought to be some red flags going up in your own mind. Uh, that, that that this this might not be a healthy relationship for the sake of my marriage. I need to be careful. Uh, I know a lot of times when people uh, in work situations talk about uh, this person is my work wife or this person is my work husband. Uh, and, and, I, and I don't have a problem with that as far as somebody that I'm, that I, that I work with, somebody that I'm, that I'm partnering with uh, for the sake of the, of the company, for the sake of the job, that's fine. But as soon as you get to the point where now I'm sharing things with my work husband, now I'm telling my work husband things that my real husband wouldn't appreciate and my real husband wouldn't understand. So let me, let me tell Jim about this because my husband, he doesn't want to hear about this. Careful. Careful. I, 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 I shared with my wife many years ago. I don't want to hear about no work husband. Don't come home talking about your work husband. You, know, you have a, somebody who shares an office with you maybe, but he's not your work husband. You don't have a work husband. You have a husband and you got co-workers. Just keep those separate. Hallelujah. Uh, so so, so, so her, the nourishing and the cherishing comes from the husband. The husband is, is charged to be about his wife's nourishment and the cherishing of his wife. My job as, 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 as Sister Porter's husband, part of my responsibility as her husband is to make sure she's happy. What can I do to make sure my wife's happy? That's why Paul says uh, in Corinthians, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to be burdened with this whole marriage business. If you, can, if you can refrain from it, if you can abstain from it, be like me. Because if you get married, you're going to be double-minded to a certain extent because you're going, to want to, you're going to please the Lord, but you're also going to want to please your wife. You're going to please the Lord, but you're also going to want to please your husband. And, and that's not a bad thing, but it's a real thing. Part of my job as her husband, as the one who loves her, as the one who nourishes and cherishes her, is how can I bring about my wife's happiness and holiness? What can I do to further that along, uh, to keep her in her happiness and holiness uh, for the sake of our marriage and for the glory of God? So the same way, again, that I, that I feed and I warm myself, I need to be about that for my wife. And I see we have a question. Uh, yes. Pastor, what is a work husband or a work wife? Oh, what is that? Okay. Uh, uh, somebody asked, what is a work husband? What is a work wife? Um, uh, it's uh, a, a phrase that is sometimes used about somebody that you work with uh, of the opposite sex uh, that you're very close to, that you are, that you're around a lot. And people sometimes use that phrase, this is my work wife. This is my, this is my work husband. Uh, and I, I'm being facetious when I say I, I, I don't I, I would I would refuse to have that in my wife's life. Uh, it's just something that people use to talk about the people that they work with. Uh, but just make my 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 point in using that is that some people take that and those kinds of relationships become breeding grounds for unhealthy uh, emotional connections. Uh, emotional affairs can sometimes uh, uh, erupt from those kinds of relationships. So, so we all, it behooves all of us, especially those of us who are married, to be careful. One of the things that, that, that we have instituted, uh, uh, and I just, uh, for, for us, I don't want to, you know, put this on anybody else. I don't have uh, any female friends who are not also my wife's friends. I don't have any female friends that my wife doesn't know. My wife doesn't have any male friends that I don't know. That's just something that we, I don't even know if we ever instituted it. It's just something that worked out, uh, that that just wasn't something that was going to happen. If you got a male friend and he need to be my friend, he need to be my friend too. We need to be hanging out more than y'all are hanging out. You can't have any male friends that I don't know. I can't have any female friend that she doesn't know. No, no, no. The, the, the primary opposite sex relationship in my life is with my wife. Everybody else takes a backseat. 
and the same thing vice versa. So he says, no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. So here we go. He says, just like the Lord nourishes and cherishes the church, that's how the husband needs to nourish and cherish the wife. And how does the Lord nourish and cherish the church? Just look at a, a few uh, verses, Isaiah 40 and 11. Isaiah 40 and 11 says this, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. That's how the Lord nourishes and cherishes the church. And that's how husbands ought to cherish their wives, gently leading them. That, that, that's one of the, the, the other uh, verses uh, that, 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 that deals with husbands de loving their wives. In Colossians 3 and 19, we, we addressed this last week, where it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Another translation says, husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Help us, Lord. Another translation, I like this one, says, husbands, love your wives and be gentle with them. This is how, how we are called to treat our wives in, in, in nourishing and cherishing ways. And then there's another translation I like, the, 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 the NIRV, the reader's version, which is a version uh, geared towards children, which it wants to make it as plain as possible. It says, husbands, love your wives. Don't be mean to them. Amen, somebody. And all the husbands said, ouch. But at times that our tongues uh, are, are, are sharper than they ever need to be uh, with the wife of our youth, the, our, our gift from God. He says, don't be mean to your wives, brothers. So, so, so nourish them like the Lord nourishes his church. He leads them gently. He leads us gently. Amen. Yes, Sister Porter. Is love more about feelings or sacrifice? The question is, is love more about feelings or sacrifice? Um, complicated answer, because we don't want to discount feelings when we talk about love. Uh, but the, the world's understanding of love is that because I feel a certain way, I'm going to act a certain way. The Christian understanding of love is I'm going to act a certain way in light and because I'm acting a certain way and in, 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 in tandem with acting a certain way, feeling a certain way is coming right alongside. See, our love is not some kind of of forced duty. That's what I, I don't want us to come away with. Well, I, I just got to do this. You know, even though I I don't want to do it. No, our, our, our love is a it's a, it's a, it's an action word. Love is an action word. Uh, and if I have feelings for my for my wife as a husband, but I'm not doing anything for my wife, then my love is a sham. My love is a charade. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave. If I if I love my wife, it's going to show up in how I treat my wife. If I love my wife, it's going to show up again, in, like the questioner asked, in the sacrifice that I'm willing to make because uh, Christ's love for the church is a sacrificial love. But his sacrifice was not absent feelings. He, 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 he loved uh, from a, 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 a sacrificial perspective and from a feeling perspective. No, nobody wants to feel like they're being loved uh, uh, reluctantly or that they're being loved begrudgingly. You want to feel that the person is loving you uh, in their in their actions and in their feelings. Uh, so 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 sacrifices is certainly the more important aspect, uh, but it, but it's going to be accompanied by love, by by the feelings of love, in addition to the actions of love. Uh, so 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 as we get back to the to the to the text, it says for we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. We, we the church are members of his Christ's body. We are members of his body. We are a part uh, of who he is in the earth. Uh, and, and one of the many passages that, that helps us with that is 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20 and 27. It says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. 
Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. That's us. We are members of his body. Then it says of his flesh and of his bones. And now as Paul says this, uh, I, I believe that he is uh, purposefully uh, invoking uh, the creation account. He's perfect, pur purposely invoking the first marriage, that of Adam and Eve. So I want us to, to consider that uh, in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. Uh, and there the Bible says this, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, Moses says, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So, so, so Paul wants us to have that in our mind as he gives us this depiction and description of marriage. And, and, and we, can, we can see that because he, he, he goes to that very last portion in the 31st verse of Ephesians 5. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So here he's quoting Genesis, but he's also quoting Jesus. We remember that Jesus, when he's giving his discourse on marriage and divorce uh, and, and explains uh, to those who are listening in Matthew 19, Matthew 19 verses four through six, it says, and he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. So Paul says, I'm going to take what Genesis says, I'm going to take what Jesus says, and I'm going to put it all together so you can see just how valuable, just how precious, just how God-honoring and how God-centered marriage is. He says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. For this cause, for, 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 for the cause of marriage. Shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Marriage, again, is a great gift from God, uh, but it's pointing to something greater. As great as marriage is, it's pointing to something even greater. That's why he says, for this cause, for what cause, uh, Paul, what cause uh, is this whole marriage business about? What cause, what is, what is it all for? He says in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. He says all of this, this whole marriage business, all of this uh, marrying that's going on, all of these husbands and wives down through the ages, all of it has to do with a pointing to the picture of Christ and his church. That, that, that Christ and his church, that, that, that's the whole uh, ball of wax. That's the whole point. See, that's why your marriage, married folk, is, is bigger than you, more important than you. Uh, you you're, 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 you're painting a picture for the watching world. Husband, the way you love your wife, you're saying to the world, this is how Christ loves his church. Wives, the way you submit to your husband, you're saying to the world, this is how the church submits to Christ. Now, Paul says it's a great mystery. It's a, it's a great mystery, this relationship between Christ and his church, as it is uh, uh, illustrated in the relationship between husband and wife. We have a question. Where can we find biblical guidance on how to appropriately date as Christians? The question is, where can we find biblical guidance as to how to appropriately date as Christians? Uh, well, uh, there, there are various uh, 
passages that, that deal with general uh, human interaction as uh, uh, Christian people. I believe those are your best guidelines. The Bible, we have to understand that, that, that dating as a as a uh, stage of a relationship is really something that, that only is a couple of hundred years old. Uh, nobody was dating uh, in, in, in ancient uh, Greco-Roman, in ancient Greco-Roman world, certainly not in the ancient uh, ancient Near East, in the ancient Hebrew world, there was no uh, dating. You know, we, we, we had uh, courting a few uh, generations ago, uh, which, you know, sort of kind of evolved to this whole idea of, of dating. Dating is fine. Dating is, is, is wonderful. Uh, but I mean, I think it would really depend on uh, the, the, the age and the stage of the people involved, first of all. Uh, but but uh, the, the, the guidelines uh, would, would, would simply be, I would submit to us, uh, just, just, just treating one another uh, with that same kind of uh, 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 mutual submission that we are all to have as, as Christians uh, and that same kind of mutual love that we are to have as Christians. Now, I will say this because there are some who would suggest that, that if we are dating, uh, that that means that we're kind of like a baby husband and wife and that you should be submitting to me because I'm your boyfriend. And I should be uh, loving you like you're my wife, even though you're just my girlfriend or my fiance. Uh, that I would say no to. Uh, that 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 that's not the the, the marriage relationship is uh, the marriage relationship. That's why Paul says, "Wives, submit to your own husbands. Don't submit to a boyfriend like you're submitting to your husband. That's not your husband. A -a -a Amen. Uh, that's not your husband, uh, brothers. That girlfriend uh, uh, that that you uh, are are." serious about? That's not your wife. Not yet. And that applies in a whole lot of arenas. Uh, just because you're engaged doesn't mean you're engaged. A -a Amen, somebody. Uh, there, there, there's a, there's a, 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 a dividing line. Uh, there's married folk and then there's everybody else. Doesn't matter if you're dating for uh, 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 six months, two years, five years, you've been engaged, you've been uh, whatever else you are. If you're not married, you're not married. Uh, so let me just uh, put that uh, in this uh, answer as well. Uh, marriage, it's the marriage relationship that reflects the relationship between Christ and the church. Not boyfriend and girlfriend, not fiance and not fiance. Uh, marriage, he says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And this again is, is why divorce is such a tragedy. Because uh, when when uh, uh, that that whole passage that 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 Jesus uh, gives from from Matthew uh, nineteen is it, it, all in response to the question of divorce. Uh, that when when, uh, when when any marriage ends, but especially a Christian marriage ends in divorce, it says something that's untrue about Christ. It says if when a husband leaves his wife, it suggests that Christ would leave the church. And we know that Christ would never leave his church. Uh, so so it, it's, it, it's, it, 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 the, the mystery of marriage speaks to the calling and the high uh, calling that marriage is to reflect, again, to the watching world, the relationship between Christ and his church. So that's so, so in conclusion, verse 33 says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Every one of you, every one of you husbands and wives. Well, this one, he's speaking specifically to the husbands. Every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. All of the husbands. This isn't just for uh, the, 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 the super deep Christian. It's not just for the pastors and the missionaries. All of you Christian men who have a wife, this pertains to you. Then he says, and each wife see that she reverence her husband. All the wives see that you reverence your husband. And again, it comes back down to love and respect. Husbands love your wives. Wives respect your husbands. And again, it's not that the, 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 the wives don't get respect and the husbands don't get love. But this is the, the, the bedrock, if you will, of, the, of a healthy marital love and respect cycle.
As we said last week, if a husband does not feel like he's being respected, he is going to be unloving. If a wife does not feel like she is being loved, she's going to be disrespectful. And the cycle goes on and on and on. But if the husband is loving the wife and the wife is respecting the husband and that cycle goes on and on and on, that relationship is going to grow and flourish and continue to be a, a blessing to one another and a blessing to the watching world uh, and all of those that come into contact with it, which is why it is so important, those of you who are considering marriage, that you marry somebody in the Lord. That's what Paul said uh, uh, last week in 1 Corinthians 7, when he was talking uh, to the widow, said that the widows want to get married, let them marry who they will, but in the Lord. See, if, 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 if I'm married to somebody who's saved, and when I say saved, I mean saved. I don't mean church affiliated. I mean saved. A lot of times we marry in folk uh, because they, they grew up in church. I grew up in church. I used to sing in the choir. They used to Christians. I used to do this and I used to do that. I swing by my grandmother's church every Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. I must be a Christian. Hold on. Let's investigate that. Because if I marry you and you're not really born again, you don't really, you're not really loving Jesus right now today, not based on something that happened uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago, then I'm going to be in trouble as a husband when it's time to love you. I'm going to be in trouble as a wife when it's time to respect you. Because I'm going to be afraid to go first. See, that's what, what, what the reason why folks are unwilling to, to uphold their part of the bargain, if you will, because I'm afraid that she's not going to respect me. I'm afraid that he's not going to be loving to me. Why should I submit to him because he's not this and he's not that? Why should I show her love? She's not this and she's not that. And that's a natural fear to have. That's a natural reluctance to have. But if she's saved, then I don't have to worry about what's going to happen if I go first. Because if I show her the love that I'm called to show as her husband, and she does not show me the respect that she's called to show me, the Lord is going to deal with her. I don't have to worry about that. All I have to do is my part. All I have to do is love her as Christ loved the church. And if she's saved, the Lord is going to deal with her in her respect walk and vice versa. If he's not loving his wife as he's supposed to, the Lord is going to deal with him. My job as his wife is to continue to show respect to him. And if I'm showing reverence to my husband as a wife, and if I'm showing love to my wife as a husband, then the, 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 this marriage is, is adequately displaying and portraying that great relationship between Christ and his church. The mystery is being revealed to the watching world. And that's my objective. That's that, that as, as a, as a Christian spouse, as we already said, my, my relationship objective is bigger than just, uh, me and mine and my four and no more. I realize that I've, I've been called to a, a higher, uh, manifestation, if you will. I'm, I've been put on display and the way my marriage functions is either correctly and uh, glorifyingly showing the relationship between Christ and his church, or it is incorrectly and ashamedly misrepresenting the relationship between Christ and his church. It is a great and profound mystery, and it is a great and profound joy uh, that God has given to his people. Amen. Uh, we thank the Lord again uh, for this time uh, in his word. And I see that we have another question. So uh, what, let's hear it, Sister There's Porter. A couple of general questions. The first is, what do you, why do you think a lot of Christians are living together? <laughs> the question is, why do you think a lot of Christians are living together? I believe it boils down to uh, it's, what, it's what we see. I, I've, we've said this before. The culture uh, has become uh, not only accepting of, of, of this situation, but expecting of it. Um, but a, as Christians, this, this is what I mean when I talk about living counterculturally. 
we have to be willing to be the odd man out. We have to be willing to be the sore thumb. Nobody likes to be the odd man out. Nobody likes to be the, the sore thumb. Uh, but this is what we're called to do and called to be. Um, so we don't, uh, and, and if you if you do the research, uh, and there's lots of articles that, that talk about this, um, couples that cohabitate before they marry uh, are more likely to end up divorced than those that do not. Now, they won't tell you that uh, uh, in the mainstream uh, 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 articles about relationships. They're not going to talk about that, but that's the truth. Um, so you, you're not, again, you're not doing yourself any favors uh, in, 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 in taking, uh, as they say, taking it for a test spin. We don't test spin each other. We don't test drive one another in the body of Christ. We trust God. Uh, we find somebody with whom we're compatible, somebody who loves Jesus like we do, uh, somebody who, whose company we enjoy, uh, and uh, through prayer and, uh, and consideration and study and counsel and all the other things that we go through to, to prepare ourselves for marriage, we do that and then we marry and then we move in. As we said before, we don't move in, brethren. And I, and I focus that on the brothers because any kind of cohabitating relationship, more than likely, uh, if it's not the man's idea, uh, it's, it's the man who, who says yay or nay. Uh, and, and, and oftentimes it's the man uh, moving into the sister's uh, spot, moving into her situation. I don't even want to get into all of the uh, potential uh, problems with that scenario. Uh, but, 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 but for the Christian, for the Christian, uh, uh, for, for the Christian, uh, we, subscribe, we subscribe to the word of God. Uh, and the word of God is clear. Uh, that, 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 that sex is for marriage. Sex is God's gift uh, to uh, the, the, the married couple. Uh, so, so we don't, uh, again, we don't, we don't test drive. We don't kick the tires. Uh, we, we don't you know, you know, try this out uh, and, and see if we're compatible. No, we, 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 we do our due diligence in prayer and in uh, 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 discussion and conversation and getting to know one another. And then we Put the rest in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Should a Christian use a dating service to find a spouse? Should a Christian use a dating service to find a spouse? I have no, I see no, no, there certainly is no biblical prohibition. Uh, you meet people like you meet people. Now, uh, there's no reason, uh, I don't see a, any biblical reason uh, that a Christian cannot or should not use uh, any kind of a dating service or a dating uh, platform, uh, whatever's out there, whatever helps you to meet somebody, um, uh, I, I believe is is a is a fine thing. It doesn't uh, uh, limit or doesn't change the due diligence that we need to do, because uh, everybody who's on a Christian dating platform is not necessarily a Christian. Uh, but 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 to meet somebody uh, who at least is. Uh, uh, presenting themselves as a Christian, presenting themselves somebody who's looking for a relationship, I don't see any uh, any issue with that. That would be fine. Final question: During a stressful time, is there a particular verse that we can refer to instead of saying harsh things to our spouse? Hmm. Um, uh, the question was: Is there a particular verse that we can refer to instead of saying harsh things to our spouse during this uh, high stress time that we are in? Um, there are so many, uh, uh, passages, uh, that deal with, uh, our speech being seasoned with salt, uh, that deal with letting no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouths. Um, uh, one of the, one of the, the things, uh, and, 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 and we do it, uh, uh, semi-jokingly, uh, but, but it, it does, uh, help take the edge off in some situations, uh, when, when I, when, when we would, uh, want to criticize the other one when we would want to uh, pick a bone with somebody or pick a fight with somebody. We have taken the saying, uh, you know what? I sure do appreciate you. I sure do appreciate you. Uh, even in this setting, even in this situation where I'm feeling certain kinds of feelings that, that, that I don't particularly uh, agree with, with, with something that was done or something that you've said, I still recognize 
See, this is the key. If I'm if I'm if I'm keeping in the forefront of my mind, uh, a that this this uh, especially for the husbands, this is my gift from God. God gave me uh, this woman to be my wife. So uh, I, I don't want to uh, 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 look askance at the gift that God has given me. And then secondly, for husbands and wives, this person that I'm communicating with, this person that I'm considering saying something harsh to, this is God's child. That's God's daughter over there that I'm about to let happen. That's God's son over there that I'm about to cut down with my words. Do I really want that? If, if somebody uh, were talking crazy to one of my children, I know how I feel. You know how you feel. So think about it from, from that standpoint. That's God's daughter uh, that you're about to uh, raise your voice to. That's God's son that you're about to use that, 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 that sarcastic cutting edge to your voice with. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't test it. I wouldn't test it. I would remind myself and I do remind myself. This is where nobody in this house has got this perfect. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted and think that, 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 that Pastor Porter uh, is living on a mountaintop somewhere. No, we're, 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 we're in the trenches with every other married couple. Uh, we have our good days and our bad days, uh, but, but we are uh, striving day by day, uh, to love each other better, uh, and to uh, mind how we speak. Again, as, as, as the question asked, in these high pressure times, uh, up under each other all day long, uh, it's easy to get on edge. It's easy to get irritable. Uh, just be, be cognizant of it. Uh, season that speech with salt. Uh, show uh, the love and the respect that you have for one another in how you talk to one another. Uh, and you'll be less inclined to fall into those uh, traps of, of irritability and, 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 and harshness in your speech to one another. Amen. Um, that is all of the time that we have. We're going to get on out of here. But again, thank everyone for tuning in, uh, for checking in with us. Uh, we, we pray that the Lord has use this time uh, to encourage somebody. Now, I know that we've had some people say, well, y'all talking about marriage. I'm, in, I'm not even going to be bothered with that. Uh, I, I don't want to hear anything about marriage. Okay, well, I, there's something I can say about that, but I, I won't. But I will say uh, we're moving on into the family in general, moving on into parents and children next week. So, 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 so log back in, uh, let the saints know that we're getting into the, 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 the wider family uh, dynamic uh, as Paul continues to show us how we are to live now that we are born again. Uh, so encourage everyone uh, to continue to look in on one another and look out for one another and pray for one another. Uh, prayer line open at 12 noon and at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, to all of the brethren, be on the lookout for uh, more details on Friday evening. We're having our men's fellowship, our virtual man cave experience. Uh, we want all the brethren to be connected uh, with one another during that time. Uh, and again, let's continue uh, to seek out ways that we can serve the Lord and serve our neighbor and serve one another, uh, those of us living in close quarters uh, with family members. Uh, we're serving one another during this time as well. Uh, so let's close the word of prayer. Father, we do thank you. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. Uh, for those of us who are uh, in considering and looking towards uh, marriage, we ask, oh God, that you would uh, uh, guide our feet, that you would order our thinking, uh, that you would uh, help us to uh, seek your will in all things, including uh, a mate, including a partner, uh, with the idea and the mindset that this is uh, for life, this is for keeps. Uh, no back doors, no trap doors, no ways out, uh, but we're in this uh, one man, one woman for life. And then for those of us who are married, help us as wives to uh, reverence our husbands. Help us as husbands to sacrificially love our wives. Help us to mutually submit and love and respect one another 
uh, as we go through these trying and difficult times. Bless us to be uh, good representatives of your love for your church. Help us not to put a black eye uh, in your uh, uh, representation uh, as husbands and as wives, uh, that we would show each other in our relationships uh, the kind of love and admiration and cherishing and nourishing and reverence uh, that exists between Christ and his church. We do love you and we do thank you. We bless your name tonight, O oh God. As you would have your way in each and every life, I ask your blessing upon every household represented for those that are watching tonight. We do give you honor, glory, and praise. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. God bless you and God keep you, my brothers and sisters. We'll be talking to you soon.